I have a limited time, only 30 minutes, and this is a pretty broad topic. So I'll just reference another session we're doing actually right now for 90 minutes, a regular breakout session. My colleague Antonella Corno is doing a lot more detail. That would be available on Cisco Live website after the show. You'll be able to see the recording and also the slides. So we'll go ahead and get, uh, get going. We're going to talk about the challenges and the opportunities right now in the IT industry, uh, specifically around talent and skills. Uh, and we'll talk about the training and certification journey, right? So some new things we've got uh, that we've announced recently, and some that have been out for about a year on network programmability, and some new certifications on cloud and automation there, okay? So if you haven't heard already by this time in the show, digitalization is changing the world, right? There's many, many examples. I'm gonna just skip right on by this one and talk about some of the skills that you need in that new digitalization world, right? So I'm gonna focus on IT, right? That's what we all do. And there's a couple of really key things there. I think the bottom one on that list, from builders to service orchestrators, that's really, to me, a, a, the most important one. We're used to building, I mean, we, Cisco's always been the plumbers, right, of the IT. We're building that infrastructure. Uh, now we have to go to really doing that orchestration of services. People aren't doing the IT capital purchases the way they used to do, they want everything as a service now. So that mind shift, that purchasing shift, right, how the uh, financials are working, is driving an awful lot of this, uh, the skills changes, okay? And because of that, things like programmability, automation become very important, because the, when you're selling a service, that orchestration ability to rapidly spin a service becomes much more important. So it's about rapid uh, business outcomes, agile. And this, these skills from the IT perspective go into all of the other business functions. And I'll use marketing as an example. Location-based campaigns. You can't do that without the network, right? You determine the location based on the network information that you're getting, either you know, a wireless access point, et cetera. So, this IT, this, this services does permeate across everything. And one of the key things we're seeing is a lot of the IT, traditional IT functions is being done more and more by the businesses. So that's a big disruption that we're seeing, uh, certainly within Cisco, but also in a lot of other companies. So a couple of things. One is about changing again to that service outcome. And two, for the IT professional, it's really about learning business skills and not to scare anybody, you don't have to go become MBAs or accounting or anything like that. It's more about understanding the business and applying the technology, the IT, in a different way to produce business outcomes. Okay, so again, that's been a big theme of uh, this show and also Cisco for the last year or so. That business outcome is really important, but the skill that you need as an IT professional is to translate that business outcome or understand that business outcome and implement the software, the infrastructure, whatever it is to meet that business outcome. That's the skill that you need to develop or to have. All right. So what's really interesting to me, uh, I've got two people on the team now, and it's not a very big team. Their job titles did not exist five or 10 years ago. Actually, I have two search engine optimization people. That's all they do. Right? That job wasn't there 10 years ago. And I've got one social media manager she manages Twitter and everything else. Again, that job didn't exist, but it's critical to us now, right? So key thing is college students today, they're preparing for jobs that won't exist or that don't, do not exist today, but they'll be doing in the next five to 10 years. What they are, there's gonna be all kinds of jobs. Most of the ones on the screen here, they do exist, but they're really new, right? So a cloud broker versus a cloud architect, right? Someone who's doing, you know, brokering a cloud service. That's a new job in the last year or two, okay? It's starting to grow. Uh, network programmer, right? That's a new job in the last couple of years. Still very small. Uh, number of jobs that are specific to network programming, but growing rapidly. Social scientists, data scientists. Uh, I actually had a session yesterday, I believe it was, uh, with uh, J.P. Vasseur, he's one of Cisco's fellows one of the 15 fellows that kind of set the technical strategy for Cisco, and they were talking about data analytics from a networking perspective and how to use data analytics to build self-learning networks, okay? 
So data scientist is going to be a very pervasive uh, IT role, including in the networking space. At least using those analytics, right? Doing that uh, analysis, figuring out how to adjust the network to you know, the information that you're gathering. Okay. So, sorry, this is going to build in just a second. There's a study, right? We, we said the college students are, are preparing today for jobs that don't exist. The challenges is we're behind, both from a corporate education, from a uh, secondary education, and so on, right? 90% of companies surveyed said they lack digital skills. This is a Gartner study. 87% feel it's a competitive requirement, right? The key thing is at the bottom, only 46% of companies are, have active programs to train their workforce in digital skills, right? So this is a big gap. And up here again, the key challenges, human capital for this new digital economy, right? That was the highest response from CIOs and CEOs of what they will need in the you know, next three to five years, okay? So skills development, uh, very key over the next few years. And we'll get from there into, from a network per, networker perspective, How's your job going to change? Right? So how many people here are from a networking background, traditional networking? Wow, the complete opposite of the crowd in, in uh, Milan when I did this there. There were two people who were from a software background, everybody else was networking. So everybody here is from a software background. No, server, well, IT, right? Traditional IT versus you know, networking, you know, software type uh, development. So what we'll say is there's a lot of new jobs that are combining these together. Okay. We'll still have our specialists from a networking perspective, right? Uh, a lot of people are concerned, I'm a CCIE, is my job going to go away? No. You can't program or automate something that you don't understand, okay? So uh, in fact, what I would say is CCIE skills become even more relevant. You, you know, if you're troubleshooting and an application is changing the network, that's a whole lot more complex than troubleshooting somebody mistyped something when they configured, okay? So CCI skills become more important. The key is there's new tools that we can use to implement networks faster, right? Make changes more quicker, et cetera. So how we're seeing it, I'm gonna kind of talk from a, since you guys are mostly software, from the app developer view, I'll focus in on that one, right? In the past, it's been about the delivery focus. Right, now it's about an outcome focus. In the past, software developers have traditionally not cared about the network, right? Now the network is very important. Again, if we're looking at something like a marketing campaign that's looking at location-based information, the network is a key thing. Uh, applications have the ability to request QoS, or even, if allowed by company policy, to change QoS on the fly, parameters, okay? So the applications are becoming much more uh, integrated with the network. Okay. And if we look at down from you know, administrator perspective, whether you're a server administrator, or network administrator, in the past you've had a very siloed view. You were the network guy, you were the server guy, you were the voice guy. Now it's a more holistic view. Okay. It's a, looking at the entire system. You're also very hardware centric. Now you have to become software centric instead of Worried about the hardware and CLI, right? Configuring each box independently. It's how do I abstract out that configuration, develop policies that push to the entire network or to all my servers at one time versus doing each of those manually. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm moving pretty fast because I only, this is an hour and a half presentation condensed to 30 minutes. All right, so we'll talk about the cloud shift. Everybody here has uh, heard about this brand new thing called cloud, right? My first experience or introduction to the cloud was when I started with IBM uh, back in the 80s, so many, many years ago. My first job in the technical space, I was sitting with my new boss and she was showing me all the things I was gonna be doing. Here's the 3172 controller. Here's the front end processor. This is what we do. And here's how they talk and she drew a big cloud with some lines. She said, this is all the stuff we don't care about, right, this cloud. And I think that's still the best definition. From a business perspective, the cloud lets them not care about it, okay? 
I just want a service. Give me my web page, give me my ad campaign. All that stuff in the cloud, I don't want to know how complex it is for you server guy, for you network guy. That's your job, okay? That doesn't mean the complexity goes away, right? But the, you know, the whole cloud shift is about getting it quicker, getting it faster, getting those business outcomes, and hiding the complexity from the end user, okay? So real quick, talent gap, huge talent gap in the cloud space, right? Lots of jobs here. A lot of people are shifting either the private clouds or public clouds or hybrid clouds. So IDC in 2012 said over the next five to 10 years, 1.8 million cloud jobs, okay? Those aren't necessarily net new jobs. If I'm a company and I move my applications to a cloud, maybe I don't need as many people, but the cloud provider now does, right? So jobs may move, but from a cloud perspective, it's a, they're estimating a 1.8 million net gain in, in cloud-related jobs, okay? I said a minute ago, cloud is about you know, abstracting out the complexity, but again, it doesn't mean it's not complex. So here's a little chart. This is how we build our certification programs. We start with a technology stack on the left, and I'm not gonna go through all of these. We map products and solutions to that technology stack, and then we take that and we build a, a training and certification program around it. So this is kind of our process. I wanted to show this slide, again, to kind of show in the middle here, um, you know, the products and solutions. This is still a very complex thing, okay? So anyone who thinks their job is going away, and that's my number one question, right? What's gonna happen to my job? Your job won't go away. Your job will change, right? You will have to do a lot of things much quicker than you did before, which means thinking about things much, you know, in a much different way. Instead of looking at a three or four week change control process and so on, it's, you know, build it, implement it very quickly, automated testing, automated configuration. But again, it's still extremely complex, okay? Let's take the next step there with cloud, we have just released a, two certification programs for cloud, CCNA, Network Associate, CCNP, Network Professional. The technology alignment is there on the left, which product sets or, or solutions it covers. For example, CCNA, it's got UCS Director, uh, Prime Service Catalog is, is kind of the focus from a cloud administration role. Okay. So then technology alignment, exam name, and the acronym. So those of you who are looking for uh, training or certification in a cloud environment. Cisco does have this uh, available to you. It's available now. Or actually, the CCNA cloud is available now. The CCMP cloud will be available in our first quarter, August, September timeframe. Okay. So we are trying to stay up very, uh, as close as we can with the technology, with the changes. And of course, cloud was a very big announcement for Cisco last year at Cisco Live. You know, some of the new things we're doing. All of that is included in this program. Also, I want to point out from an automation and programmability perspective, the second course there, building the Cisco cloud with ACI. ACI is all about automation uh, and integration of the applications with the, you know, the networking infrastructure, the application view or centric view of IT. That is an, you know, basically about 30% of the overall curriculum, right, from a cloud perspective. So this is focused both on those business outcomes Right, what that the, your customers, whether they're internal customers or external customers are asking for, as well as the programmability automation aspects of it. Any questions on the cloud? Again, there's a lot more detail behind this. Uh, the presentation my coworker's doing, and also we have a very large certification lounge down in the world of solutions. If you want more detail, plenty of people down there can go into uh, the detail of this. Yeah. We'll talk about programmability. I'll spend a little bit more time on this because you guys all mostly said you're software guys, okay? So how does this work, right? What we're seeing is similar to what we saw in the past with uh, voice, right? When voice and uh, voice over IP became prevalent, we're moving from the TDM world to the voice world. What happened was for a long time, the, uh, we were working with network engineers, teaching them voice. TDM, because they still had interface to the old world. 
we were taking TDM engineers and we're teaching them IP so they understood the IP world. And we ended up with this person who knew a little bit about both. Actually, in some respects, a lot about both, depending on their, their level. So we ended up with a cyber engineer who was doing mostly voice, dial plans, right, interfacing with the PSTN and so on, but they also knew how their packets were being routed across the network, they understood QoS and so on, this hybrid engineer. There was still a delineation of job roles though. The voice engineer, even though it was voice over IP, they focused on the voice side. They understood enough about the networking to communicate with the network engineer. The network engineer had to know enough about how a voice application was impacted by things like latency and so on, so the QoS could be there. Uh, they had to be uh, understand enough about the circuits that were required to interface with the TDM and so on to make sure the routers had the right cards and so on. So it was not one person typically that got voice up and running in network. It was a voice engineer focused on the voice aspects, network engineer working with them. They both had to learn a little bit to talk to each other. Okay? We're seeing something similar now. And with that, I'll go here. Who's going to be the network programmer? It's not going to be one person. Okay, so it's going to be against kind of that hybrid thing. We'll, what we're seeing is the network engineers are learning enough about, have to learn enough about network or programming so they can communicate with a network programmer. Okay? They have to understand some of the methodologies. They have to understand what APIs are and so on, especially because they're going to have to potentially troubleshoot if an application causes an, an issue on the network. Right? So they have to understand how that is going to work. The person who's actually writing code to manipulate the network has to understand some of what the network's doing, maybe at like an associate level, right? IP addressing, uh, basic routing, and so on, but they don't have to know, they don't have to be a CCIE. So we take these two people together, CCIE, or you know, the networking person says, here's what we want to do, defines the policies, defines the requirements, hands it off to the programmer, who then implements, right, and tests. So as a team, they're working together. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a role for people who are really, really good at both, right? There are some people who are, a lot of them out here, who, who are excellent at CCIA level and really high-end programmers. Personally, I'm a CCIA, but I'm nowhere, I, I can read a set of code, but that's about it. But that's probably enough, right, that I can talk to somebody had that conversation and get what I need implemented, okay? So it's not, it's not one person doing everything from, as, as we're talking about network programmability, it's a set of job roles, a team working together is what we're seeing for the most part. So with that, we've, we've identified four job roles, right, that fit in here. I'll start at the, uh, at the bottom, right? We have the support engineer. Actually, I'll take that a little bit different. The left side are existing job roles, right? The bottom ones, the bottom three, are traditional networking job roles. The top one is a typical application developer job role. The way we're seeing this migrate is starting from the bottom up. The network programmability engineer, this is the traditional network engineer who has to learn things like controllers. What is a controller? What's it potentially going to do with my network, okay? Something like an APIC EM. How am I going to install it? How am I going to maintain it, right? How am I going to troubleshoot it? So those traditional things. Not programming, right, but understanding programming. If there's an application that's talking directly to the network devices, for example, with the 1PK uh, API, what has to happen? What kind of uh, certificates and authentication and so on Again, what kind of troubleshooting tools do I have to troubleshoot it? So this bottom job role is a traditional network engineer learning enough to understand what an application could potentially do in the network. The next role up, the designer. This would be someone who is designing or specifying the requirements for an application. A sample application might be a uh, custom encryption algorithm. And this was actually one that was discussed at Cisco Live a few years ago. There's a uh, in the European Union, they have certain requirements for the emergency services, government mandated. 
So for them to communicate over their wired, wireless infrastructure, the voice over the wireless is encrypted. They wanted to backhaul that over, the, over an IP network. Different encryption protocols. We didn't support the one that was authorized by the government. So one of our partners wrote a custom application, right? Packets came into the router, they were diverted. If they met you know, the requirements, their voice, they got diverted to a, uh, an application that did the encryption algorithm, sent across the network, decrypted on the other side, okay? That requirement specified by the, you know, someone who's designing both the application and the network. So this person understands both, you know, is application architect, whatever you want to call it, with a heavy or a deep understanding of networking as well. Okay, so this is the design role. The top one, business application developer. Again, this is from a, uh, if you're a traditional ERP or you know, any other kind of application developer, what do I need to know about the network to get the services right, that I can get in the future? So again, a little bit about the APIs, the network, uh, you know, what things the network can do for you in an automated fashion. And then there's this new job role, network programmability developer. This is someone who's specifically writing applications to do things like automate network functions, uh, you know, have the network dynamically react to a security threat or for QoS policies, okay? So this job role did not exist in the past, so this one's brand new. Again, it requires some networking knowledge, but not, certainly not CCIE level. The, uh, but it requires deep programming knowledge, deep programming skills. This person would work together with the network engineer and the designer to, de to develop applications that are actually manipulating and controlling the network. Okay, so this is the kind of the way we saw the job roles rolling out. This is changing over time, right? There, you know, and not every company will go exactly this way, but at a high level or broad level, this is what we saw. And with that, well, real quick, I'll talk about data center, virtualization. This is probably the hottest area from an automation and programmability. So you'll see there, these are all the certifications and training programs we have. They include things like ACI in the data center, uh, Puppet Chef, et cetera, there's discussions there. And of course, a heavy emphasis on Cisco uh, data center content. And then the network programmability. Okay, so we do have training and certification programs for all four of those job roles. And they cover both traditional, or I should say, uh, enterprise and service provider type networking Right, so things like open SDN controller, APIC EM, and then we also have a data center side which focuses on ACI. Okay, so to, for example, to become uh, a network programmer, sorry, network programmability developer, you take an ACI, or I'm sorry, you take one course, one exam that covers APIs, how you talk to Cisco devices. From an engineer perspective, the guy who's supporting it, there's one course and exam that's focused on the enterprise guy, and there's another one that's focused on the data center, ACI, okay, because that's kind of a traditional split within the networking environment. Okay. And again, we have the cloud offerings. I already went over these. Uh, again, these are new, offered uh, the CCNA cloud this quarter, uh, actually this month, launched, and the CCNP launching in the near future. So again, I went through that very quick. I think I'm down to five minutes for Q&A. They're all cheering for me. Okay, any questions? Y'all waiting on the next presentation? Or for the beer. Or for the beer. <laughs> okay. Great, well if you do have any questions, again, we have a whole team uh, down at the certification lounge in the World of Solutions. Uh, somebody for each of these tracks who can answer specific questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.